know, it's getting to the end of the season. Usually this time of year, I start getting a lot of questions. You know, how was your season? How things go? How much more time you got left? Well, this is the time of the year you start out with two jackets on and a snow cap and end up today in shorts and a t-shirt. It was a good year for me overall. Not a ton of crabs, but we had a lot more crabs than everybody else did. Crabs seemed to be pushed further up the bay, which is what we thought, with the salinity being higher. I'm starting to get shell rock. All those are areas where the shell is like starting to dissolve away. It's all these little spots, like it gets real super brittle. See where it busted off? So this crab hasn't shed in a long time. He'll eventually just, his shell will just completely fall apart and he'll die. This crab right here is absolutely jam-packed. Don't get no better than that. Never really got a ton of rain here. We did have quite a few storms that came down from Pennsylvania through Tonawingo and down to Susquehanna. Those storms really didn't do too much as far as changing where the crabs were and what they were doing. Sometimes it seemed more like it pushed the crabs into the, back into the rivers. Guys I know in the creeks and all, pots on their piers were catching tons of crabs and are still catching a bunch of crabs. The nice big crabs, the heavy crabs. Definitely was a good year for recreational guys. Not so much uh, really blow the bridge all the way down from what I've heard. A lot of guys if they crab most of the season, didn't catch a whole lot. A lot of guys pulled their pots out and quit part way through the season. Some of them are back in now catching the females. Quite a few females running down. The, uh, the big fall suck runs going on and a lot of guys are chasing after them now. Water dropped into the upper 60s, talking highs, lower 60s, upper 40s at night. Really gonna start to cool that water down pretty quick and push them crabs out of the river and push them into the deeper parts of the bay. Should have for me maybe two more weeks or so. The market's been pretty good. The crabs have been really nice lately and just you know, beautiful, beautiful crabs and dark, pretty crabs. Definitely uh, the best time of year to eat them. Because I get the most compliments this time of year on the crabs. Not that I have much to do with them, but as far as taste and how heavy they are and just a beautiful, nice crab. I would say from a non-scientific waterman's perspective, crab, I would give the bay, I'd give it an A plus. I really would. Hey, don't be that guy. Just kidding, that was old Captain Jay. Stopped by to say hi, he said he picked up his last load today. He's done for the year, I'm a real jealous, real jealous. And the reason is, now I'm not saying the bay is perfect, it's not. There's a lot of issues, there's a lot of things that need work, but when you look at all the positives, far outweighs any negatives. I caught one of CJ's crabs, crabbing on Bakken today, his tag crabs. Lucky number uh, 93. Bay is much better than a lot of people perceive it, and you know, the water's not crystal clear. It's never gonna be clear. There's, forget how many million people live in the watershed. Yeah, that's part of water up all year. In a while. But where we are compared to the 80s and early 90s to now, I mean, we're light years ahead. And if you'll notice, this is CJ's truck. And I think I'm going to leave it for him to find here. Super diverse ecosystem. We've got all kinds of fish, species, freshwater, saltwater, ocean fish. We have the greatest tasting crabs on the face of the planet. You heard it here first. The grasses have come back started seeing again those little dark false mussels growing on some of the clam shells. They're super, super purifiers. I mean, they suck the water up, filter it 10 times better than an oyster. You can take a handful of mussels and put them in a fish tank compared to a bunch of oysters. They'll suck that water cleaner, faster than them oysters will. And nobody ever talks about that. So a lot of it's them little mussels and how important they are to all that that happens. And we've had real good sets of them mussels the last four, five, six years. I've seen boats, the whole bottom is covered in some of these rivers. And I mean, they're just constantly cleaning, filtering that water and sediment, all the junk out. I have a lanyard here attached to his door handle. I'm gonna clip that on the tag. Some of the other changes like the trash wheel have been good. I'm helping to collect a lot of that trash coming out of Baltimore. And I noticed a lot of those rains from Pennsylvania and further north had a lot less trash in them. 
in the sense of plastic and anything we would contribute. Thankfully, like the trash wheel is continuing to reduce the amount of trash coming into the bay. That's a huge help, especially coming from, from Baltimore City. So when I was a kid, the trash used to be eight inches thick across the beach when you get a huge rainstorm. It, it's not like that anymore. You get a little bit of smaller pieces of trash and uh, chip bags and so that's floating trash overall. Definitely seen some changes in the last 10 years, which has been a good thing. To focus on that and not the negative. Focus on going out and trying to catch a snakehead or, or a giant blue catfish or a nice rockfish. We got bluefish, Spanish mackerel. Go down the farther end of the bay. There's triple tails. There's cobia. We have tons and tons of different types of fish now that you can target. Crabs, this year in the upper bay, people will be telling their grandkids how good the crabbing was in these rivers. It'll be the good old days. I can guarantee it. Pretty sure you'll find it here. I just want to report back to him. Make sure you always report back to him if you catch one of his crabs. I think I'm just going to leave it right about here and we'll see if he finds it. I think he will. I'm fairly confident he's a pretty observant guy. So I think that'll be just fine. Last few peelers in here. Too cold to be able to shed them out. So I'll leave them here. I got a couple guys might want them for bait. The guys below the bridge definitely had a tough year this year. I know a lot of guys struggled. They had a few crabs in the spring and just not much else. It seemed like the crabs were just really, really shoved up in the rivers and, and way up the bay. But definitely a northern, northern year. Been seeing quite a few of these, probably 30, 40 maybe a day. Little flounder all up out there on the mud. Hopefully they'll grow up. And I don't know, they don't ever seem to end up in the bay, but They'll be somewhere, maybe down the ocean or somewhere further south, I guess. Nice fish, though. Now, as far as crabs themselves, we have a threshold that we stay under in Maryland, and it's around 34%. You look at some of the graphs they, they've published, we've stayed most years, especially on the females, way below that, 18, 19, 20% somewhere in there so you figure we're leaving over 80 percent of the female crabs in the bay to reproduce so you're talking a humongous amount of crabs left in the bay and another speckly crab the other speckled crab was returned uh to my truck not very nice i don't appreciate that captain luke he was caught out we let him go here at the pier and uh he caught him out here at the mouth of the river so he went a little ways before he got caught, definitely heading out. So I'll put a tag on this one and uh, let him go, see where he ends up. Jason's been working on tearing these pots apart, the old pots. Over time, they get worn out. And we'll save the stuff that's good on them, the clips, the, the rubber and the, uh, the hooks, the, uh, the call rings, the iron, the bait doors. These are vinyl coated and uh, the rubber on the bottom here. And then we'll, we'll reuse those on next year's pots when we build new pots. Same thing with the males. A couple years ago, I think we had two years, we got close to that 34%, never crossed over it. Uh, last year, I think was 19%, so it was way down. This year, might even be lower, I, I don't know. I mean, there were so few crabs caught in a lot of the bay, it wouldn't surprise me if it was really low this year. We did have a lower population, so it all, you know, as, as the population goes up, you catch, you know, a different percentage, things like that, different years. Commercially, I think more crabs were caught recreational than a lot of years, just because of the pressure from the higher prices and the fact you could go out and catch them. If you can go out and catch crabs, and word gets out, oh man, we call crabs. With the internet now, social media, guys are going on there and posting their catches, letting everybody know where they were, other guys can go, so. We don't know much about the recreational harvest. There's no real documentation. There's no way to really keep track of it. It's, a, it's usually a guess, so, but mostly on the lower end of, of the harvest itself. And recreational guys in Maryland aren't allowed to keep females, so there's no pressure on the females at all. Uh, the irons are, I think, over $5 now, five and a quarter. The haul rings are 25, 30 cents. 
Captain Luke put together a video the other day how much all this stuff costs a pot. I think the pot's really pushing forty dollars now, forty some dollars. So anything we can save and reuse, we're gonna do it. Caught a raccoon the other day. Thought I was done with that saga, and then I came out this morning. I had a claw left and an empty shell. So all the way to the end of the year, he still got me. I'm gonna work hard this winter to try to trap him and get rid of him. Hopefully that'll be it, although it's every year. The saga continues. It's a process, it takes a while to smash them up. When you're done with them, you get a pile like that of trash that goes to the scrap yard. And I'll probably make $3 on, eh, $2,000 worth of crab pots. The biggest takeaway from the science is that blue crabs are not being overfished and they're not depleted. And I think it's really proven that, especially the commercial industry, is not, does not really affect the cycles of the crabs. It's much more of a natural phenomenon. You gotta focus on the, on the positives. Great year recreational crabbing, and not every year it's like that. Not every year you can go out and trout line, catch a couple bushel every time you go. Not every time the crabs are in the rivers. Not every year the rockfish are real super good but you can still go out and do it. We have access to it. We're over here on the boat today on, the, on our non-crabbing day. We don't get no days off, but hair's hair coming soon. Jason's working on this uh, exhaust wrap. It's been a while since we caught any fishing lures, but there's a hopper that was tangled up around the hawk. Bunch of braid with it. Get that out of the ecosystem. Nice one. These things are probably 10 bucks now. Crazy fishing lures are expensive. That's what I'm gonna do is keep focusing on the positive and being thankful for what we got now because it could all change tomorrow. There's a speckled crab, number 130, here on October 20th, 21st. We're gonna let him go and uh, see where he ends up. Going around in this cabin today, I got a terrible stench in here. Uh, I think I got a scupper hole down the bottom in the bilge that's plugged. I got to remove this plate here, down here, and see what I got going. Check out this battery charger here. I bet that thing is like 35 years old. It's probably older than me. It still works. Use it every day. Charge my batteries up for my inverter. It's still going strong. If I bought one of these new, it'd probably last a month. It's amazing how things used to last, not anymore. We need to keep making strides in the right direction. We gotta get these sewage treatment plants cleaned up. We gotta make changes, huge changes there. The Conowingo Dam has its issues. Doing something in Pennsylvania to reduce the amount of rain we got coming down on these super floods that we get. We had a little spot today. Very few of them left. This, I haven't seen spot in a couple weeks. Just a little tiny guy. Probably one of the last ones we'll see. They're usually heading out now. Well, it's definitely a tough day today. Guys are just really burned out, wore out. Started thinking maybe next week trying to get a motivational speaker to come in. I know this guy's an old captain. Thinking about bringing him out next week. Probably try to get him to motivate the crew, really help uh, get them guys, give them that last push for the, for the end of the season. We'll see. See if I can get him. He's he's definitely hard to get a hold of, and I mean, hopefully he's available. So we'll see. So a couple of these little guys today. These usually are the end of the road. They're some of the last to come out of the rivers. Start seeing them little guys. You know, you're getting getting close to the end. Nice little male. We'll have him for next year. The bay itself is able to change and make adjustments and continue to be productive even with all the negative. So get out there and enjoy it. Don't sit on the couch and worry about all the bad stuff. Get out there, enjoy it, and you'll be thankful you did.